So Alhytham's first rerun is upon us, and this video is going to break down whether or not you should pull for Alhytham, how good of an addition he is to your account. I personally believe that quite a bit has changed since he did come out, and honestly, a bit of a spoiler alert, but I think he only got better as time passed, as new units came out, and as we got to play him for longer, solidifying his place as the go-to Dendro carry. With that in mind, how good is he exactly, and is he good enough to warrant a pull for your account? What are his strengths and weaknesses? How replaceable is he? And how good of a DPS character is he compared to some either hyper carries? All of these questions are those that I will be answering in this video to help you make an educated decision on whether or not you should pull for him. Before we begin though, as always, I do want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so starting things off, in order to understand just how good Alhytham is right now, we first need to talk about his role as a character and how he can a lot of the times get more value than you might think. In fact, Alhytham is a Dendro main DPS character who spends a lot of time on field doing a ton of damage both from his mirrors, which are the passive of his skill, constantly dealing AoE damage in front of him, while also having pretty good scalings on his normal packs, which will be Dendro infused, and enabling you to proc a ton of very powerful Dendro reactions, which are a core part of his teams and his gameplay. Because of that and how much Dendro application you have on both your attacks and your mirrors, you can proc the spread reaction a ton of times by using Alhytham with an Electro character, increasing his damage significantly on top of the fact that he also double dips in elemental mastery scaling, which is not only valuable for the reaction damage, but also his mirrors damage, which will have its own elemental mastery scaling as well, meaning that his reaction damage will naturally be high since you want to be building elemental mastery and crit on him, which are things that buff your reaction damage and also his personal damage. Another thing that being a reaction focused carry actually means though, is that your team damage will be exceptionally high on top of Alhytham's personal damage. In fact, while a lot of hyper carries can be, you know, a hyper carry and do the vast majority of their team's damage, while that can sometimes be the case with Alhytham in certain quicken teams or certain variations, which we'll cover later, generally speaking, his best teams revolve around high reaction damage from things like spread, but also hyperbloom, which is one of the most broken reactions in the game, where another character is going to be proccing that, an electro character like Kuki with a hydro support like Yelan, who both will have good damage as well. This makes it to where, while Alhytham's personal damage is genuinely good, and he is typically the best on-field Dendro DPS, he can also have really good team damage damage from his support characters and the reactions you're proccing through spread, hyperbloom, strong hydro supports like Yelan or Sing Cho, and strong electro ones like Kuki for hyperbloom, or Beto or Yaimiko for things like Quicken. Because of that, not only are his current teams really good, and Alhytham as a unit is generally regarded to be one of the most valuable C0 DPSs you can pull for, but also this means that his team comps are relatively flexible and there's a chance that he can synergize with many different elements because of how his teams can revolve around literally any Dendro reaction. While it isn't optimal, you can even use him in like a Nilu Bloom team or a Burgeon team, despite Hyper Bloom and Spread typically being the two better ones. Now, with that in mind, there's a few factors to consider to determine how good Alhytham is as a pull for your account. First of all, I believe it's important to reiterate something I always say, which is that high value support characters will typically be better additions, more flexible additions to your account than the average DPS character. This is because high value supports like Kazua, Nahida, or even some of like the five star Hydro characters can be used in so many different team comps with almost any DPS character that you may be using as just being staples for many, many teams. Because of that, having good supports is an important foundation to your account, but you also want to have good DPS characters to be able to clear the hardest DPS checks. Now, while you can typically do this with a free character like Shang Ling, who's broken, or Hyperbloom teams using even just four-star characters, Alhytham as a carry is one of the better and more high-value ones you can pull for. In fact, my philosophy with recommending characters to pull for is typically for DPS characters, first of all, determining how good they are, and then second of all, whether you like them and like their playstyle, and then if that's the case, then you should get DPS characters that you enjoy using, provided you understand if they're strong or not, whereas support characters are going to typically be the safer investments. For Alhytham, I believe he's one of the more high-value pull characters in terms of a DPS character. In fact, while I believe it can be more valuable to have Nahid on your account, for example, if you can afford it, as far as DPS goes, Alhytham's a really good pull and can benefit many different accounts, provided you want to use him as an on-field Dendro, and can also benefit from some of the strong support characters we mentioned, like Nahida or Yelan. On top of that, something that's nice about Alhytham is that he isn't a hyper carry per se. He's a character with really strong damage, but also really good team damage, which means that even in some content where Alhytham may not be the best, you can sort of flex his team in a way where his supports will do more. For example, while his damage is Dendro and the reactions that he procs, like Spread and Hyperloom are also considered Dendro damage, against Dendro resistant enemies, especially bosses like in the current 12-2, you can do something like run two offensive Hydro supports, which while yes, may ruin a bit of your Dendro reactions, can more than make up for it against Dendro resistant enemies, by giving you a ton of damage that is not Dendro to clear a Dendro resistant enemy, whereas Alhytham is just overall a really consistent carry who can clear pretty much any content that is thrown at him. On top of that, a lot of the recent 
abysses have been wanting dendro so having a good dendro character will always help with that in mind i believe it's also important to mention another strength of alhaitham is also the fact that as a baseline c0 dps character he performs a lot better than a lot of other carries you can pull for while a lot of carries or hyper carries get better with key upgrades for example while raiden is great at c0 her c2 or engulfing lightning are huge upgrades to her and similarly hu tao at c0 is pretty good but c1 and homa take her to another level and the same can be said with many different hyper carries without hytham his base c0 is oftentimes better than other carries c0 and while he does have pretty good upgrades like his signature weapon being pretty okay it's not as big of an upgrade when compared to other five stars or even some of the four stars we'll talk about compared to some other hyper carries the same can be said about his constellations whereas getting for example a c2 nahida which will benefit your account quite a lot will be better than al hytham c2 even for his team's damage provided you play them together whereas some hyper carries can be more dependent on their first or second constellation at least to be like competitive damage wise or to outclass someone like Alhaitham. With that in mind, the second thing I wanted to mention, or address rather, is whether or not he's dependent on Nahida. And the short answer is no. Honestly, most of Alhaitham's teams, if you have a spare Nahida, can just get better with her. You get more dead drop application, can reliably proc spread, hyper bloom, whatever, while also buffing your team's damage and having pretty decent personal damage from Nahida as well. Because of that, I do recommend getting Nahida for your account. But if you have her on another team or don't have her, then Alhaitham can still perform very well and can still be a good pull as many of his teams can use either just another generic four star dendro support like yao yao kirara or even the main character and some of his other teams may not even need another dendro character where you can get a lot of value even without nahida with that in mind it is important to mention that alhaitham can be replaceable in the sense that yes he's a main dps character so not as high inherent pull value as the support as we mentioned and also you can replace him with some other dendro characters on field like even nahida on field in certain teams where she can act as a driver or you could play someone like tsikhnari or an on fielder of a different element like ayato but generally speaking as far as dendro dps's go alhaitham's personal damage will be the highest and his team damage is also really good which is why i genuinely believe that alhaitham is a great pull that you will not regret as long as you need a dps character want an on-field dendro driver just keep in mind he's not a must pull obviously support characters have more value but if you need a dps then look no further and i think he's really good and a dps who i can actually for once feel comfortable recommending provided you do want to play him and understand how his kit works with that in mind a few things i wanted to add just in case you're wondering about alhaitham first of all for his basic rotation guide i included that in my detailed alhaitham guide so go watch that if you want but i feel like a lot of people seem to think he's more complicated than he is whereas in reality if you're wondering how to play him you literally just use your burst to get three mirrors instantly start your rotation with your burst and then you can permanently stack his three mirrors by refreshing them once every four seconds by using your skill and then by using a charge attack one or the other every four seconds after attacking in between so you burst attack for four seconds skill attack for four seconds then charge attack and you'll have the maximum amount of mirrors for your whole rotation you can also do some things like starting a rotation with a skill if you want to do a shorter one where you can hold your skill and then plunge attack immediately to start the combat with three mirrors if you want to do a shorter rotation also while we will cover alhaitham's best teams a bit later in the video as i said he can basically be played in any dendro reaction with spread and hyper bloom or quick bloom which is quicken and hyper bloom being my two favorites and the most recommended ones in those teams as i said strong supports that benefit your entire account can be used with alhaitham like nahida or yalan but he does not depend on them which is an important distinction to make this fact is really important because it means that he can get a lot of high value on most accounts and it also can free up certain support characters like Nahida or Yalan but also like characters that he doesn't synergize with namely Kazua and Bennett for your other team which will oftentimes need him with that in mind other things you should know about Ahitham regarding his build is that he is pretty flexible now obviously I would recommend going for four Gilded Dreams it's the best set on him but if for example you're the only Dendro character in your team and you don't have anyone else that can hold the Deepwood set like for example a Kokomi then going four piece Deepwood on him won't even be the biggest DPS loss as it'll give him 15% dendro damage bonus while also decreasing the opponent's dendro res ideally use this on your other support character though like your healer or your dendro support to buff your alhaitham's damage and then give him the most stats possible by using the four piece guild of dreams and getting a ton of em and attack for free now i wanted to emphasize though that it's really important that someone in your team has the deepwood memory set and in some specific teams where alhaitham is your only dendro option like for example hyper bloom with two hydro characters or some virgin teams or whatever the deepwood memory set can be the best assault for your alhaitham again if no one else has it, whereas otherwise, generally speaking, four piece guild of dreams will be his best in slot. Alhaitham can also mix and match two pieces though to just get the best substats possible on him. As while four piece guild of dreams is great, it's not a must as the four piece set, while it does give you a lot of stats, doesn't give you more than just having good substats, which is why he can be relatively flexible in that regard. With that said, for his stats, it's pretty straightforward. He typically wants energy recharge to get his burst back, elemental mastery, crit rate, and crit damage, but he also scales on attack percent, like EM buffs both his reaction damage and his personal damage, and so will crit rate and crit damage so you double dip in all three of these stats but attack percent can also 
also be good for his personal skillings and sometimes favored. For example, if you aren't proccing a lot of reactions on him, but generally speaking, stacking crit rate, crit damage, and elemental mastery will be the way to go. But the fact that he can also use attack percent can make it a bit easier to build him, especially because your substats will be more flexible. Do keep in mind that since your burst is crucial on the Hytham, you want to make sure you have enough energy recharge to use your burst every rotation. And since most of his teams typically run another Dendro character, you usually play Al Hytham in double Dendro teams and also can get a lot of energy from other sources. Generally speaking, you typically don't need that much ER, like around 130 to 140%, but obviously sometimes it can be a bit more. So keep that in mind. But generally speaking, you can get enough energy recharge from your substats and not need it on a main stat sands, allowing you to go for offensive stats like EM and then getting your ER needs on your substats alongside crit rate, crit damage, and attack percent. On top of that, Al Hytham's weapon selection is very flexible and one where you should not feel forced to pull for a signature weapon, especially because it is relatively niche. Like, yeah, it gives you a ton of crit, which means it's at least going to be decent on pretty much any sword character, but it's not typically as good as like the Jade Cutter on most other characters or even sometimes Miss Flitter, which is why if you have a good five star sword for him, like Jade Cutter, it's only around 10% worse in DPS. So you can just use that, be happy, and not need to pull for a better one. But even if you're a free to play player or don't have any of the five star weapons, then that is perfectly fine too. And you can get great free to play options like the Parasol, which was an event weapon from a few patches ago, or a fully refined Iron Sting, which can give him a good amount of elemental mastery and some elemental damage bonus, with both of these weapons typically being about as good as one another, depending on the situation, and both being really decent options for Alhytham as free to play options. On top of that, if you're energy hungry, you can even use something like Favonius, or you can go for pretty much any weapon that has either crit or elemental mastery, since he scales so well with both. This means that EM weapons like even Xyphos' Moonlight are great, provided you can use the ER on its effect, or crit weapons like Black Sword from the Battle Pass, Harbinger of Dawn being an especially good free to play option if you are shielded and can stay 90% HP or higher, with it obviously being not nearly as good if not. Something else to note is that if you do choose to go for his limited weapon and you get the wrong weapon, you get Freedom Sworn instead, Freedom Sworn is also a viable option on Alhytham because it gives you EM and then will also buff you and your team with its effect. While I wouldn't recommend using this on your Alhytham over someone like Kazuha, provided you have both, if you're going for Light of Foliar Incision and you end up getting Freedom Sworn, it's also a decent option for him and typically better than the four-star alternatives, making it a fine replacement, sitting just under Jade Cutter, Miss Flitter, and the Haran Sword, all three of which being good five-star options for him, with his signature weapon being the best slot. Keep in mind, there are so many good sword options that you don't need a five-star one, but if you do have basically any of the five-star swords that I mentioned, they are all really good on him, with Jade Cutter being the second best and Light of Foliar Incision being his best slot. And for the exact weapon ranking, be sure to check out my full Alhytham guide, linked in the description, if you want to see the exact numbers. Now, as I said earlier, Alhytham is very flexible in his teams as the go-to Dendro driver, the on-field DPS for so many different Dendro reactions, making him a strong on-field for any Dendro reaction that you're going for. In fact, my favorite ones include Hyper Bloom or Quick Bloom, which is a team where you run him with a Hydro and an Electro character, and then a Flex slot at the end. The Hydro character typically will be a fast Hydro applier like Yolanda or Sing Cho, but could also be a slower one like Kokomi in certain instances. After that, you'll run an Electro character like Kuki, who will be stacking full Elemental Mastery and proccing the Hyper Bloom reaction from off field while also healing your team. Outside of Kuki, you could also use units like EM Raiden or Dory, but Kuki is the more generalistic option. For the last slot, while well, Nahida is a a great option and typically the best in most Alhytham teams, a really, really good Dendro support. You don't need her and can either use another Dendro character you may have or another element. Like in this Alhytham team, you can actually just change it from Quick Bloom to more of a Hyper Bloom focused team where you could run Synchro and Yolan together for a ton of Hydro, or you could alternatively run a second Electro character like someone like Beto, who can also be good for your team's damage. There's really so many options you could do with another great one being a spread team where you're running Alhytham with Electro characters, being more of a Quicken team to be exact, where you're proccing both spread and aggravate, dealing good damage on both your Dendro and your Electro characters. In these teams, what you want is typically any good Electro supports, Kugi being good for healing and a bit of damage, Yai, Miko, Beto, Fischl, and technically Lisa all being really good for off-field Electro damage, with Yai, Miko, and Beto being my favorites. Do note that while Fischl still is a broken character in pretty much any team, she has some negative synergy with Alhytham because of how her Ascension 4 passive works, not triggering on the spread reaction, but you still can get quite a bit of value from her here, even in a bad scenario for her. Still a good unit especially if you can get more uptime on her Oz, if you can summon him in between your Alhytham's burst and the time it infuses by bursting on Alhytham, swapping out, summoning Oz, and then swapping back to Alhytham. Do note though that I don't recommend this for most players as it does require you to be fast and only works on low ping, which is unfortunate, so keep that in mind. Generally speaking though, any of the Electro options like Yai, Beto, or Kuki work very well here, and you can either run one Electro support or two, and then the last slot is flexible. You can run Zhongli if you want a shield and some res tread. You can run a Nemo character to buff your Electro damage, or you can run another Dendro unit for more spread application. And Nahida is typically the best here as a really good Dendro support. With that in mind, you can also go some less used
used, but still pretty strong teams revolving around any of the other Dentro reactions like Burgeon or Bloom with Nilu. Because of that, you can really just use Alhytham with whatever characters you have, provided they are well geared and you are leveling them up to level 90 to ensure that they're dealing good reaction damage. Lastly, while I talked about Alhytham's constellations being kind of whatever, they can be good upgrades or increases in damage if you want them. Like Alhytham C2, despite his C1 being kind of useless in practice outside of just convenience for a cooldown reduction, his C2 can give him a decent amount of damage. But if you're looking for constellations, typically constellations on his support characters, like even Nahida C2, will be more damage to your team than Alhytham's. But you can still definitely upgrade him if you want to get some early constellations or want to go all the way to a sixth one. With that in mind, while these are definitely pretty decent, especially his C6, if you want to go all the way, they're really not recommended. He doesn't have like the best constellations, but I believe he's designed in a way where at C0, he's such a strong carry and better than most other hyper carries, at least when you factor in how much damage his teams do overall, that I think he's a really strong unit and a really good Dendro player who does not need constellations, but can get them if you want some upgrades. And so, yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about Alhytham. There's really a lot to say, so I hope I managed to cover all of it without being repetitive, as he's a character who I am, I think, a bit biased to like because, like, look at him. But outside of just his playstyle being fun and him being a cool character, in my opinion, he's really strong meta-wise because Dendro teams are strong, so he's a bit carried by Dendro, but also he has a lot of Dendro application, and out of the Dendro onfielders, he's usually the best option. Like, yeah, he's replaceable. Yeah, you could use Nahida on field if you want, but Alhytham is just a really good addition to your account if you want a main DPS character, whereas if not, he might not be for you, and you could just pull for valuable supports instead. So those are my thoughts on him. I really like him. I hope this video was helpful. Apologies for the slight delay. I wanted it to be out earlier, but I'll be faster in the future. I hope it helped. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.